Good morning, everyone. This is Brother Dial from Fleming Island, Florida. I want to greet everyone this morning in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I would appreciate the Lord having us or giving us this time that we can uh, come together again to uh, talk about what God has done and what He is doing. Of course, He's working by His Spirit through His body, His body, His people. And so, Brother Brown said that God is a spirit and He works through man, but the devil, he is also a spirit and he works through man. And this is pretty easy to see <clears throat> his works that he does through men because they're this out before us all the time. But God, he's working his word and his will through his body and it seems like people, they have a, a terrible time uh, trying to uh, place what is going on. But anyway, the Lord has given us a way to know these things. And uh, the way to know them is He reveals them by His, His Spirit. So He sends somebody on the scene. Uh, he gives the Word for that time. He manifests the Word for that time. And then that is the God's interpretation of the Word. Pretty simple. But it is pretty simple. But a, a lot of people have a hard time uh, grasping that. So let's just open up with a word of prayer. Lord Jesus, we thank you again today. Lord, we, we thank you that you said that we would know it. And Lord, that we, because it's given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom, but them that are without, there's just no way even though they might try, even though <clears throat> they might even be in the ministry, Lord, but without you, the revealer, there's just no way for them to know. But Lord, we thank you that you've made it a way this day. You've sent a message, a messenger, and you've uh, proved it. You put your stamp of approval on it. And Lord, it makes no difference what the world, the devil, or all the people say. Lord, you made it so plain and so perfect that the predestinated, there's no way for them to miss it. So Lord, we thank you for that today. And it's always been, says, follow me as I follow Christ. Lord, and we know that you're here even to this day, leading and guiding your people. So, Lord, we pray that you would continue with us today and help us, and we pray that you would get glory to yourself. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> and today, I've been uh, thinking about this, and uh, I had made some statements in the past and I thought today I'd just maybe take a, a subject on it and bring in some of the scriptures and uh, some of the quotes from uh, Brother Branham and so on and see if we could kind of uh, maybe just get it uh, maybe settled of what it's all about because there's so many uh, people looking for so many different things of course, they all point to a scripture, they all point to a quote or whatever, but with all that, there's got to be a, a, a truth, a real uh, vindicated truth somewhere. So, I want to give this a title this morning, and the coming of the Lord is, the coming of the Lord is. And so, as we go through this, we'll uh, hopefully we'll be able to uh, maybe explain what it is. <clears throat> so I want to read a, 
I want to read a couple of scriptures here to get us started. This is going to be in Isaiah uh, 7 and 14 and Isaiah 9 and 6. So let's read. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a child and call his name Emmanuel. Then in Isaiah 9 and 6, For un, unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. So, these scriptures that I just read, they were fulfilled when Jesus Christ came on the scene. And if you're anywhere a Bible reader, you would know that these scriptures point directly to the time that God would become a man. And he did become a man. And he come on this earth and manifested that office that he was to be in. And there's there's so many scriptures that, that told about this and that was all the way from Genesis when he said the woman's seed and the woman's seed was Christ because God gave her a seed. Mary, God gave her a seed. And she brought forth that child without knowing a man. And the angel told her, and you shall call his name Jesus. And she did. So, <clears throat> that, that right there was what we would call it the first coming now and the first coming so the coming of the lord is the coming of the lord is the word that pertains to that coming being fulfilled because and i have i've got the scriptures i didn't bring them today but anybody that reads knows from reading that Brother Brown said that he was only gone because in Acts 1 Jesus is taken up in the cloud. He said, why are you standing up here gazing? He said, he will come again in like manner. All right, so he's taken up. But 10 days later he comes back on the day of Pentecost. So he was only gone 10 days. Then after he comes back, you can't find in the scripture where he ever leaves. It said he went with them, confirming the word with signs and wonders. And then over there, Paul said, he said, he'd never leave you and never seek you. He said, I'm with you now, but I'm going to come back and I'm going to get, I'm going to dwell with you. And it's, a, it's the same God all the time because there's only one God. So that right there, when he come on the scene by the birth and by his ministry and fulfilling all the prophecies, remember on the road to Emmaus, he started at Moses and went all the way down, proving that the ministry that he had, that he was talking to those, those men on the road because their eyes was holding, and he started at Moses and gave all the scriptures concerning himself. How about that? The word talking about the word that pertained to him because he was the word made flesh. All right, so the coming of the Lord is the word being manifested, fulfilled. And that's, and I mean, nowadays they've got so many comings that he's, he's not, you'd think he was like an elevator going up and down, up and down, up and down. The coming of the Lord is the word being in the season. Because this part of Isaiah, Isaiah spoke it here, and then what? 700 years later it come to pass. So it couldn't come to pass until 
the season was right. And none of God's word can come to pass until it is the season for it. Then it has to be all those little things that go together to make it the word of the season. All right, so that was what we would call the second coming or the first coming. Now, so we're going to read here and we're just going to go back into the prophet's <clears throat> message and we're going to read what, if anybody knows about the comings, surely he does. He's the one that's supposed to give us the, the mysteries of God. And we don't have to wait for somebody else, some theologian somewhere, to well, you know, this is what it'll be right here. No, God does, don't, he don't reveal his secret to the theologians. He reveals his secrets to his servants, the prophets. And the prophet has to be proven, has to be vindicated. Somebody just raised on the scene and said, well, thus says it, but no, he has to be proven by God that to be what he has said is the truth. That's what Moses said way back there. So with that, <clears throat> I just picked out some statements here <clears throat> and we want to read them now. And as we read these, remember what we're talking about. The coming of the Lord is the word of that particular time being manifested and fulfilled. All right, now, <clears throat> here in the fourth seal, Brother Brown makes a statement. And when, and Brother Brown said, if I ever preached anything in my life that was the truth and was inspired, he said it was those seals. He says, I was so inspired and directed. So watch here. He said, now watch Christ. First coming, he come a mortal to bleed and die. Is that right? That's his first coming. Second coming is the rapture, we meet him in the skies, immortal. His third coming, he's the incarnate God. Amen? God, Emmanuel, to reign on earth, that's right. Only three. So there's only three comings. First coming, second coming, and we what we call the third coming. All right? So... That's all that we got. We want to talk about is, is those comings. And now I want to get another statement, and this is out of the little message here in Los Angeles, California, 1965. And remember, he's he's talking. He's not at the tabernacle. He's talking to just a mixed crowd there in Los Angeles. I mean, there's probably. Uh, make believers unbelievers and believers and everything that's all mixed together and he's telling what's more or less what god has put on his heart to preach and he takes the title does god change his mind okay and he makes this statement now jesus came in three names jesus came in three names he came son of man which is a prophet, son of God, which went through the church age, son of David, but in between the son of God and the son of David, according to his own word and according to Malachi 4 and many scriptures, and remember where he's giving this at. This is in a mixed audience. This is not in the tabernacle. So he just drops in Malachi 4 and he just says many scriptures and we who know the message and what? We know the rough, what the rest of the scriptures are. He's to return back into his church in physical form in the people in human beings in the way of being a prophet. All right? So, now, 
he's talking about? Jesus came in three names. Son of man, son of God, son of David. But then he says in here, in between, in between the son of God and the son of David, this little space right in here in between, and he said according <coughs> to Malachi 4, and many of the scriptures, and we know what the rest of them are, St. Luke 17, 30, John 14, 12, and so on. He's to return back into his church in physical form. And then they see the people nowadays, they see that and they think about, well, evidently the physical form, Jesus is going to come floating out of the sky. But he, he didn't say that. He said the physical form in the people, in human beings. And the people are scratching, well, how, how in the world can this be? In the way of being a prophet. And they say, well, a prophet? Well, that's what Brother Branham was. He, he said, I am a son of man revealing the son of man and the Son of Man is the Word, because in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and, <coughs> and the Word <coughs> was God. So it's, it's always the Word. And then the Word, what does it, the Word have to do? Does it just come out and float around? No, the Word has to be manifested. And that's what this ministry was all about. It was a, a manifestation of the Word. The Word what? The Word for the season. So here we, we're coming along now. All right, so in between, so that means, and we'll read it here in a little bit, but in between, we know the Son of God was through the church ages. And we know the Son of David was in the millennium. So now, at the end of the church ages, we're supposed to have the Son of Man again. And he's supposed to manifest the scriptures and do what he's supposed to do for that day. And that's why God works on earth through a man, and he, he don't get a half a dozen, he takes one man, and gets him in his hand, and that's who he uses. And that's exactly what he done. And then he, he gives us another hint as we come on down in this quote out of does, he, does God Change His Mind? He said, and watch what this man done when he came down to see Abraham. First thing, he told Abraham about his name being changed because he didn't call him Abram. He called him Abraham. And when he did, we find out that he said, Where is thy wife Sarah? S-A-R-A-H, not S-A-R-R-A. -R -R -A. Why? He said, She's in the tent behind you. Now showing that the one he was talking about, and this time he knew the very secrets of the heart, and he knew what was happening behind him in the tent. Well, we've seen that thing manifested so many times in the ministry of Brother Branham, over and over, and, and the people just, well, that's, that's wonderful. That's wonderful because it was proving and manifesting the word for the day. And the people would go, oh, well, I don't know. So that's what it was all about. And he said, now she was 90 and Abraham was 100. And he said, I'm going to visit you according to the promise of the time of life. And Sarah on the inside heard him listening through the, the wall of the tent. And she laughed at herself. And the angel, the man sitting there said, discern her spirit in the back behind him and said, why did Sarah Lamb sing about these things? Okay, like I say, 
So he gives us what's going on. He gives us the type of ministry that is to be there. And he says it's in between this and this, son of God and son of David, and we see it's perfectly fit in there. And then we come to find out he said that Malachi 4, St. Luke 17.30, Revelations 10, 1 to 7, had been fulfilled. Okay? Wow. Fulfilled. So, that lets us know in between Son of God and Son of David, he's to return back as Son of Man. Well, if that's been fulfilled, of course, they know if they agreed with that, well then, if that's been fulfilled, you move right in to the son of David. And they say, oh no, we can't have it on son of David until we get the millennium. Well, it's according to which one you're looking for. Because they've got the thousand years out of Revelation all marked up as just being literal, literal, literal. So they go through the book of Revelation and they say, well, we'll make this part literal and we'll make this part spiritual. Who? Who can do that? We'll make this part literal. We'll make this part spiritual. And you know, yeah, well, that's your interpretation. So in Revelation 20, coming down through, he said a thousand years, a thousand years, a thousand years. And so they say, well, it's a literal thousand years. Well, over here he's a lamb. Over here he's a lion. Over here we got a seven-headed beast. And over here we got all these demons and everything else running around. Oh, what are they? Oh, well, you know. From... Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, the millennium, when Jesus comes, he brings it with him. He brings it with him. It's, it's his kingdom. He's the king in the kingdom. And they say, oh, well, Brother Ram said, you know, the Gentiles don't have no claim on him as son of David. Well, we do have a claim on him as Lord. He is our king, and there's only one God. Hmm. So let's move a little further. Now, so in between the Son of God and the Son of David, we got Son of Man. Well, we, we, beyond a shadow of a doubt, we know that has been manifested, fulfilled, and done. The prophet is off the scene. Now let's go to uh, the paradox there in Tampa, 1964. Jesus comes three times. One time, he comes to redeem his wife. Next time, he comes to catch her away. Next time, he comes with her. Three comings, see? So there's only three. He said, everything like Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. See, all, everything is in three. The mathematics of the Bible is perfect. If you keep them mathematics right, you keep your story right, see? But if you get off the mathematics, you'll have, you'll have your picture, a cow picking grass in the top of a tree. Hmm. Well, that's where a lot of people has got the cow. Way up in the top of the tree because they've run out of their mathematics. And so the coming of the Lord is the Word being manifested. Like I say, He didn't run back up to heaven and then come back down and run back up to heaven because He's been here. Brother Brown said there's only one coming of the Spirit. He came on the day of Pentecost. And He did not leave. And I don't believe there's a scripture in the Bible that said he left. Everyone I keep saying says he come. He come. He manifested the word for that age. That's what the coming was.
So you got to keep the mathematics right. Only three. And so I don't know. Uh, I, I, ain't going, I don't know. That just, that's the simplest I can get it. But now, he was talking about, he said, he come as son of man. Well, we talked about the scriptures there which bring him on the scene as son of man. A man, God becoming a man. And then, I was thinking about the day of Pentecost. The scripture said in Joel 2.28, And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your old man shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. Well, after what happened in the upper room, that is the exact scripture. Peter said, this is that. That was spoken by the prophet Joel. What was it? It was a manifestation of the word. God coming on the scene, fulfilling his word. And then I, I, I looked at the scripture of Ezekiel 36, 26. A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit I will put within you, and I will take away that stony heart out of your flesh, and will give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you, and cause you to walk in my statues, and you shall keep my judgments and do them. Amen. Well, that's exactly what happened when you get the Holy Spirit, when you get born again, when you have a new birth, and God's Spirit comes and takes up residence in you and gets on the control tower. You become a complete believer. And so that started on the day of Pentecost. Okay. <clears throat> Let's look at the unveiling of God. Oh my. Yeah. The unveiling of God. In other words, God's going to be here and, and somebody is going to take the veil off of Him and let us see God. Notice now. He came first as the prophet, and they crucified him. His own crucified him. He came as the Son of Man. Then after the Holy Spirit came, then he was Son of God. Well, that's what we just read there. He came as the Spirit because Jesus said when he was here, as a man, he said, I come from God. I go back to God. That, I come from the Spirit. I go back to the Spirit. And then Saul, his name was Saul then, which later was changed to Paul, met him on the road to Damascus, and he was that great light up in the sky. And he said, capital L-O-R-D, Lord, who are you? He said, I'm Jesus whom thou persecutest. Well, he wasn't messing with Jesus up there in the sky. He was messing with his body down here. So, he, after this Holy Spirit came, then three sons' names, Son of Man, Son of God, Son of David, then he became that Son of God. God is a spirit. He was the Holy Spirit, Son of God. He lived through the church ages as Son of God. Now, in the millennium, he'll be Son of David, sitting on the throne of his father, David. And people get that. And they think that, oh, when they get over there, there's going to be there's going to be this great big platform and everything, and there's going to be this great big throne, and Jesus is going to be sitting on that throne. Well, that, that's 
that's contrary to the message. Brother Brown said there was only three thrones. He said the throne in heaven, the throne moved into Jesus Christ, and now the throne is in his body. If he's got a throne, it's in the body. But no, now they take that which is absolutely spiritual and they make it literal. And think we're supposed to just to gobble that up and like we don't know no better. Well, I don't think so. He said, now in the millennium he'll be son of David sitting on the throne of his father, David. He is son of David now. But of course, they read that and they say, whoa, well, that was evidently a misprint. How could he be son of David now when we're talking about the son of man? It's the same God. All the time. Jesus, when he was on earth, he was prophet, priest, and king. He was son of man. And he was son, he was the son, his body, as he was the son of God. And he was the son of David. They called him son of David. And he responded to son of David. And the woman called him Lord. And he responded to Lord. And, they, and he said, I the son of man. Well, he was all of that. Because he was the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And it was the same man and the same God all the time. Oh no. Well, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Or is he not? No, he is the same. Now remember, between the Son of God, uh oh, here we go, this between again. Between the Son of God, in the Laodicean church age, they put him out. Remember, Laodicean church age, Revelations. What, three, about verse 20 right in there? Jesus was on the outside knocking, trying to get in, and they never let him in. All right? So they put him out, and in Luke, he said he would be revealed again as son of man, prophet, fulfilling the rest of it. And he did, absolutely. Luke 17, 30 was fulfilled. The scriptures tied perfectly together. Son of man, son of God, son of David. What was it? It's the same God all the time. Just changing his form in morphe. Brother Brown looked up that word. It was a Greek word. He said it's like an actor. He said, all he's doing, he just changes his mask. One time he comes out as this character, he goes back, changes his mask, comes out, and it's the same man all the time, and it's the same God all the time. You think people down in this day, with all the teachings and everything, and the manifestations and everything that God has done, that they, well, look here. If you're not predestinated to see it, you will never see it. That's, that's all I can say. He just changed it. It's a great drama to him. He is acting it out. He is acting it out. And if this act calls for the Son of God, so be it. And if this act calls for the Son of Man, that's Him. And if it calls for the Son of David, that's Him. And who's going to tell Him He can't? But people, they get what? They get their own interpretation, and that's it. They won't move. Now, still in the unveiling of God. And boy, I tell you what, 
If you ever catch this revelation, you talk about God being unveiled, you will see Him unveiled right before you. And I was thinking the other day, you know, Brother Brown said, he told a little story about the king that loved his people so much that he wanted, he wanted to get to know them really get to know him. But, at, but as the king, he couldn't because every time he went out, boy, they was... But so, one morning he gets up and he lays aside all of his, his royal robes and takes his crown off and everything else and just puts on regular, everyday clothes. And they said, King, uh, what are you doing? He says, he said, I want to go out amongst the people. He said, I want to get to know them. I want to go to work with them. I want to go to play with them. I want to see how they live. And so he walks out among the people. And among the people, he's just another common everyday man. And he can go and he can fellowship and he can live with them. He can go to their house and he can eat with them. He can do all these things because now he is just one of them. And that's exactly what Jesus Christ done. He become just one of us. And he was the king and he was almighty God and he was all these things. But he become a man and he wasn't born in some palace somewhere. He was born in a stable. Just common people. And he was able to move among all the people. He, he, he felt what they felt. He knew what they knew. But I was thinking about it. he done that. And how about even to this day? The things that we do he is living in us now. See, as a man, he can only be with them. But now, as he's come in the Holy Spirit, he is in us. Hmm. Praise the Lord. Now, he goes to work with us. He goes to play. He goes out to dinner with us. He goes our activities with us. And he said, don't worry. He said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'm going with you all the way. Boy, I tell you what, you're talking about comfort. My goodness, just thinking, no matter what, what comes your way, what you encounter, don't forget, he is in you. Sometimes, we let the situation just overwhelm us when we think, well, you know, I, I, no, we're not. He is with us. All right, so he's, he's acting it out now. And he, he came as son of man, the prophet, done exactly what the woman, the, the little woman, in all of her sin, there at the well, remember St. John 4, there at the well, she recognized him. She said, we know Messiah is coming, which is called the Christ. That's what he'll do. What do you mean that's what he'll do? He told her about her life. He told her to go get her husband. She said, well, I don't have... He said, yeah, you told the truth. you got five. And the one you're with now is not yours. She said, well, sir, you must be a prophet. And we know that Messiah is coming, which is called... And that's what he'll do. See, she recognized because she was a predestinated seed. And the predestinated seed recognize this this day. Listen. Then she, where's the rest of them that didn't recognize it? 
they had nothing to recognize with. Now, I'll tell you what, that little woman was in bad shape, according to the world, according to her sin, and she was. But Jesus had a bleach that take care of all the stains of sin, puts them right back on where they come from, the devil. They had nothing to recognize with. They were in sin to begin with. Hmm. Well, that pretty much sums it up. Why can't people see the, the manifestation, the manifestation, the fulfilling of the work? They have nothing to see with. Look here. Look. If she saw that one act. And she said, Sir, you must be a prophet. And Jesus said, I am he that speaks to you. Well, that was all she needed. She didn't need a, a three-hour sermon. She didn't need nothing else because there was something inside of her that caught fire. And she took off and said, Come see a man. And people today, I mean, you can send them books. You can send them recordings. You can send them everything. And all they do it's just kick up a fuss. They can never come to the realization <clears throat> that this word has been fulfilled. Look here, her and her condition, she saw the word fulfilled and glory to God, she got what she needed. Those priests, the ones that should have known, they said, well, he's a devil. And it is the same thing today. Either you recognize Him, the Word being manifested and fulfilled, or you'll call it some kind of a dirty name. Hmm. So look here, He come and manifest Himself as something. And she said, and when she seen Him identify the secrets in her heart, she said, I know Messiah is coming because that was his identification. And today, people have seen it over and over and over again. Brother Branham even give it the name, the Messiah sign. And they'll say, oh, he wasn't no Messiah. He had the Messiah sign, the same one that Jesus Christ had, proving that it was a Son of Man revealing the Son of Man. He couldn't have done it no other way because it was the same yesterday, today, and forever. The coming of the Lord is the Word being manifested and fulfilled. <clears throat> Still in this unveiling here. For his acts, he changes his form. Oh, you mean God can change his form? Well, yeah, he's God. He changes his form. Then he came the form of Son of Man. For the Reformer's age, Wesley, Luther, and all down through then we, we find out that they got it. They got it so bundled up, just like the Israelites did. Yeah, well, well, well because they, well, you know, that's, that's not. And they added and they took away and they had to add all that. You got to wash your hands. You got to get your buttons on and about the same thing the church did. Got it so bundled up just like the Israelites did, till when he does appear in the last days in the Pentecostal age as the Holy Spirit, they rejected it. And what did they take? They rejected the Holy Spirit and took speaking in tongues. Oh, that's, that. what well, if you speak in tongues, you got it. Well, a lot of them spoke in tongues that didn't have it. 
They rejected it. They did the same thing Israel did. Rejected, rejected. And what does he do now? Return as son of man. And then from that, son of David. How close are we? Oh, how close are we? Well, he said that 50-something years ago. Now, how close are we? We have arrived. Son of man has been fulfilled. And whether you can see it or not, son of David is here. Son of David, king! With his queen! Son of man, son of David, son of God. He is revealed in the last days as son of man according to Malachi 4 and the rest of the prophets, prophecies pertaining to this hour. That hour when he was here on earth. Brother Branham, a live man, preaching, manifesting the word for that time and age. No more dealing with the church. After he, after they put him out on the outside, knocking at the door, some predestinated seat in there yet, and he must get to them. And they wonder. And I guess they think, well, uh, Jesus is going to come back and he's going to find the church door. And he's, it, was, it was Jesus in the ministry of Brother Branham as son of man that was knocking, trying to get back in because it was the word, that the word they had put out. They didn't put Jesus a man out. They put Jesus the word out. And the prophet, the word come to the prophet and he's trying to get him to see the word. And his ministry was to restore the word. And he did. And he said, we have got the complete revelation of Jesus Christ. We have got the full, complete word with perfect, it is perfect now, with divine vindication. But people say, oh, nah. There's more word to be fulfilled. Yeah, there is, and we're fulfilling it this morning. Revelations 10, 8 through 11. Tell them what has happened. Look here. In our age, we're just like the disciples were in their age. They were going everywhere telling that God had fulfilled His Word, that He had come down and become a man, and He had paid the price. He had went to Calvary, gave His life, shed His blood, and the price was paid. That was their message. That it had, was paid, it was over. That was Paul's message. And our message is that the word for that day has been fulfilled and I don't care how much you don't want it to be, it has been and it's over and it's been manifested and that was one of the comings. Hmm. <clears throat> no more dealing with the church after they put him out. He's on the outside knocking at the door. And he was. Knock, knock, knock. Now let's go over here to the feast of the trumpets. Now here is the calling out time. At the sixth seal, when it's, when it's open, the persecution struck the Jews in the literal standpoint. Everybody... You, now, you want to get something literal. The persecution struck the Jews in the literal standpoint. And you just go back and read the history, go back and see the pictures, and you'll see that it was in the literal. And here comes the persecution to the church in the ecclesiastical standpoint because the bride is already called. Well, when was he calling out the bride? He's called a people out of his name. Down through the church ages. And when the church ages is over, I'm, I can't help it. 
That's it. And the bride is called the Sabbaths are over. He called it seven Sabbaths, seven church ages. And ready for the Jews to be called. Where to? Well, they're the next ones. <clears throat> if, if the bride is already sealed. And he had that, that last half of Daniel's uh, 70th week, three and a half years, where was he supposed to go? He was going to go make himself known to the Jews. And he's calling them where to? The Feast of Atonement. O church, don't you see that? Call to the Feast of Atonement. What? To recognize the atonement. No more chickens and geese and whatever they've been, they've been doing. It's the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. Israel's going to know that. Hmm. Israel's going to know that. And Brother Adam said, the Elijah of this day is the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't you think Jesus Christ can make himself known to the Jews? And it wouldn't be one, two, three, four, five. It would be Jesus Christ himself. That's the one that's making himself known to the Jews. But no. They, they look at that <clears throat> and they work it out. I don't even want to go into it. Let's just stay with what the truth is. Okay, proving his word there in Los Angeles. I said the other night, he come in three names. The name of the Son of God, Son of Man, Son of David. When he was on earth, the first time he was Son of Man. He could not be the Son of God then. He never claimed to be. He was Son of Man. When anybody would question him, he said, you see the Son of Man, the Son of Man. Now, Son of Man is a prophet. He said he come that way because the Scriptures cannot come contrary because he cannot come contrary to the Scriptures. That's why today that our message of this hour cannot come through theologians and theology. It's got to come back to the same thing it's promised to do. It must be that way. So if it's coming back to the same thing, Son of Man's a prophet, prophet comes on the scene. Prophesied in the Bible, Old Testament, New Testament. Behold, I send you Elijah the prophet, Son of Man. Hmm. So it has to do it the same way. And he done it the same way. And the people are looking for <clears throat> Jesus of 2,000 years ago, that natural body. They're looking for it. I don't, I, don't, I don't know what. He can't come down here and walk around and have a ministry and manifest the Son of Man. It can only be done through a prophet. So we find out that this man, he had to be a prophet. Not son of God there. He had to be son of man. Jehovah himself called the prophets. Jeremiah and them, son of man, when you see the son of man. Who is the son of man? They kept asking. And he served his office as son of man. Then he served his office now as son of God. God is a spirit. When now he served through the church ages as son of God. Now in the millennium he'll be son of David. When he sits on the throne of David. He'll be heir to the throne, son of David, son of man, son of God, son of David, and it's the same man all the time. Mm. Just like Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, the office of God. He was God the Father, then He became God the Son. Now He is God the Holy Ghost, not three gods, one God, three manifestations, three attributes of the same God. But no, 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 no. There's only one, one God. That's all there is. But there's different manifestations. <clears throat> and I'm, you know, the coming of the Lord is. The Word being manifested, fulfilled. And you can see that. He 
manifested each one of these. And when he manifests, that is his coming. That is him being present here, manifesting his word. How can you manifest the word without him being here? When he is the quickener of the word. I mean, there's no way. So he has to be here. Now, <clears throat> I want to look over into uh, the breach because I wanted to look back on the, the scripture. Now, we had, we had read about out, out of Isaiah, and that's the way he was coming, and he come and he fulfilled that. Then we read out of Joel and Ezekiel, and he come by the Spirit. And then we talked about Luke uh, 17, 30, and so on, and Malachi 4, and we said, glory to God, that's been fulfilled. That was Brother Brown. That was the Scriptures, the prophecies for this day. And now, he's to come once more time. He said he, he come to redeem her, he come to get her, and he comes back with her. Three. So let's look at Revelations 19, and we'll start with verse 11. And remember, Revelations 19 is John on the Isle of Patmos out there. He was out there for two years, and he was seeing vision, vision. He said, write what you see. And John, is, boy, he's, he's writing. And his, his, his hands being moved by the Holy Ghost. Right, right, John, right. And here he is in Revelation 19, verse 11. And I saw, yes, right what you see now, and I saw heaven open, and behold a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. My goodness. They capitalize those. When what they written? They capitalize those. Faithful and true. And in righteousness do he doeth he judge and make war. Hmm. Judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, because we had taken off all our crowns and gave them to him. On his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. Now, if you go back up just a little bit there in Revelations, and he said, behold, the, I think it said, the, the marriage has come and the bride has made herself ready, and she was clothed in fine linen, had on the same dress. So who's riding these horses? And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword. Symbol. Anybody got any ideas what was in his mouth? And who his mouth was? Goeth a sharp sword. And with it he should smite the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. He sure did. He was a sacrifice, but he's not the sacrifice any longer. There's been a change. And he had on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. Look here. The king is coming. The king is come. They used to sing that. The king is coming. The king is coming. Well, I got news for you. The king has come. The king is here. 
Could you imagine such an event as this happening and nobody in the whole Christian world knows anything about it? Well, let's read something about the king here. Because son of David is king. Amen? And we go, we go into the breach. We go on where these mysteries are coming loose here. And something's happening. The seals are getting ready to be broke. And there's only one that can break them. Remember Revelations chapter 5. Notice, here he comes. He leaves the throne as an intercessor. As a slain lamb to become a lion king to bring the whole world into judgment. Uh-oh. Well, didn't we just read something about he's coming with the judge? He's coming with a rod, a sword's out of his mouth. And Brother Brown said that picture right there. He is he was wigged, just like the old judges in England's wig, supreme authority, supreme deity, nothing. He was the judge of all heavens and earth. Hmm. So from a slain from from a slain lamb to become a lion king to bring the whole world into judgment that's rejected our kinsman redeemer then is king over all king of kings and the lord of lords why he's got the title deed of redemption it lays within his hand. I'm glad I know him. Me too. Glory to God. He's got the time. Why? Because he has taken the book of redemption. He's no longer sitting as an intercessor, as a mediator. He's got what he was interceding for. What was that? His people. Then, he claims his inheritance. That's the church, the bride. He claims it. What does he do then? He disposes of his contestant, Satan. He throws him in the lake of fire with all those inspired by Satan to reject his word of redemption. Uh huh. So what was it? I saw heaven open. Oh. That's, that was John seeing a vision. Well, what John was seeing in the vision was taking place here on the earth in the literal standpoint of it. To become a lion, a king. But no. Son of David, king. No. We, we can't have that. No, no, no. He's yet to come. Well, you keep on, keep on looking. <clears throat> now, still in the breach. He comes forth, steps out from eternity, off of the throne of the Father, where he has set as, did you get that? Off of the throne of the Father. Where he is set as an intercessor. Now he comes to be king. Oh, to rule all nations with a rod of iron. Judgment is set. Oh, brother, our kinsman redeemer holds it all. That's right. Yes, sir. And what does he do? He calls that contestant's hand, Satan, they're mine now. I've raised them up from the grave and he takes all the liars and the perverters of the word and all like that with Satan and destroys them in the lake of fire. She's all over now. Throws them 
into the lake of fire. So, and people, they don't even know. This is all taking place. This drama was all acted out right here on earth. And the people, they're wondering, well, I wonder when all this is going to take place. Never able to recognize the word in the season. Hmm. <clears throat> now this one here, to me, just, just seals the whole thing. Just boom, you don't have to go no further than this. Well, I tell you what, if you read Revelation chapter 5, and you say, well, you know, now, uh, I, I, I believe the seals are open. Well, if you believe the seals are open, who opened the seals? And they are open. And when were they opened? Because everybody said, oh yeah, the, the seals, we know, we know that the seals are open, and that's what this, this thing was all about. The, the mystery and so on. The thunders that sounded that, that, that John couldn't write. But he said, in the days when the seventh angel began to sound, the mystery of God should be finished. Now, in the, in the breach between the seven church ages and the seven seals, because he had to open them to ever break them to preach them. <clears throat> and here he is as a mediator on the altar. Just a little longer until there's more has to suffer like you. But now he comes from here at this last seal. Last seal. Well, if it's the last seal, which one is it? There was only seven. So if he comes forth at the last seal, he's coming forth at the last seal, the seventh seal, and he's already told us the seventh seal was the coming of the Lord. The seventh seal was the coming of the Lord. The seventh seal was when the word for this day was going to be manifested and fulfilled. And people, they got well, well, you know, he's, he's coming from, from over here and he's coming down. Yeah, he's coming. He's going to be here to manifest the word. Because he never left. He left, went up, gone 10 days and come back. And even in Revelation 5, it says he come and took the book. And if you listen to these, uh, these people, if you listen to these people, they claim, yeah, he come and took the book. And then he went back and got on the throne. Well, I don't read that nowhere in the Bible or in the message. That's something they have to put that there because they cannot accept. They say, oh my goodness, if he's not an intercessor, what are we going to do? He's got the book. And if you're either in the book or you're not in the book, And he had to stay there until every name. Hmm. <clears throat> okay, now. But now, he comes from here at this last seal. He's no more mediator. Catch that. He's no more mediator at this last seal because he has come from that position he's changed now because there's some more word to be manifested he's no more mediator he's king now oh no oh no 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 well that's what he said 
If he's king now, that sounds like Revelation 19. Brother Brown said the church goes up after the third chapter of Revelation and don't come back until Revelation 19. And as far as they're concerned, that's how way off in the future somewhere. Well, glory to God, let me tell you, that has been fulfilled. He's king now, and what does he do? If he's a king, he has to have subjects. And his subjects is them that he has redeemed. Revelation 5, has redeemed. Those ones in the, in the what, six, seven verses of Revelation 5, they were the redeemed and they were singing a new song. <clears throat> he has redeemed and they cannot come before him until he takes the rights of redemption. Now, he walks forth from a mediator. I don't know how many times you have to say that, Brother Brown. You are really pinning that down. He walks forth from, where, from a mediator where death put us in the grave. He comes forth now with the rights. And listen what he says. And even those who are alive and remain till his coming, till he fulfills his word, shall not hinder them which are asleep. For the trumpet of God shall sound <clears throat> at the last trump when the last seal is broken and when the seventh angel is given his message, the last trump shall sound and the dead in Christ shall rise and we which are alive and remain shall be called up together with them to meet the Lord in the air. He claims he comes forth now to claim his possessions. Watch. Look at this. My, broke the seals, reveal the mysteries, reveal them where? To the last church age and the only ones that's living, the rest of them is sleeping. He comes forth as king. The coming of the Lord is the manifestation of the word being and it has been fulfilled. And the people say, oh, no, 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 it can't, can't be. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm not surprised because Jesus Christ, he come the first time he fulfilled that word to the letter. And all the ones that was supposed to know him when he got here, he come to his own. And they were supposed to know him. But what did he say? They had got so bundled up and everything else that when he come, they could not receive him. They rejected him. And look here, the same thing has happened this day. He come just what he was supposed to do, fulfilled his word, done everything he was done, ever manifestation, the same yesterday, today, and forever. And they rejected him because he didn't come the way they had it all wrote out and charted out. They were looking for something else and still are. And here he is, just going right on, manifesting his word and will until every last bit of it has been manifested and fulfilled. Praise the Lord. So the coming of the Lord is, yes, praise the Lord. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you today. Lord, we thank you for the revelation of Jesus Christ. We thank you for the Holy Spirit, Lord, that has come amongst us to reveal you this day, Lord. Not some history, not some future, but you, present tense, right here. And you are in your body, the King 
is here with the queen and you are here in your feminine designation that she is the body and she is bringing forth her word for her day, Lord. Pointing back and seeing what God has done and what he's manifested, Lord. What a day that we are living in, Lord. And the world knows nothing about it. The supposed believers know nothing about it. They were thinking in the future for them. And we're in here enjoying the peace and the comfort and the revelation of Jesus Christ. And Lord, we truly, truly, truly thank you for it. And we give you praise, honor, and glory in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless.